This is my final, official winter forecast for the winter of 2025 to 2026. Before we begin, I would like to apologize for the lack of videos and lack of consistency on my posts. I have been much busier than I expected and haven't had much time to create content. I understand that this video is coming out very late, and this will be my last forecast of the season. We will start by discussing the major factors playing into this winter season. The factors themselves haven't changed since last forecast, but their impacts have. The first major factor is the development of a La Nina, which is currently ongoing. A La Nina occurs when the waters in the central and east-central equatorial Pacific cool below average. It typically influences winter patterns by creating a blocking high pressure over the North Pacific, resulting in warmer and drier conditions in the southern United States and colder and wetter conditions in the northern United States. As of now, we have officially entered into a La Nina, which has slightly modified our initial forecast. This is because a full La Nina was not completely certain before, but is definite now. As we move forward, the probabilities of a La Nina peak around the October-November-December timeframe. After that, the probabilities begin to decrease heading into the heart of the winter season, with the probabilities of a neutral pattern becoming more likely by the January-February-March timeframe. This makes the forecast very complicated and interesting, as the first and second half of winter may be very different. The second major factor playing into the winter season is the development of the polar vortex. Just note that this one hasn't changed much since the last forecast. This is likely to be a major factor once again this year, as La Nina patterns typically bring alongside significant polar vortex appearance and Arctic blasts as a result, and we have the evidence from temperature anomalies of every single La Nina event to conclude this. The polar vortex has a stable phase and an unstable phase. When in a stable phase, cold air is contained in the Arctic Circle and poses no Arctic outbreak threats to the United States. The problems arise when the polar vortex enters an unstable phase, which weakens the jet stream and allows cold air to move southward, allowing waves of this Arctic air to push into the continental United States, resulting in major, and often dangerous, outbreaks of significant cold air. This could be very prevalent this year if the forecast stands. Now it is time for the final edition of my temperature, precipitation, and overall forecast maps. Starting off with the temperature map, this zone is where slightly warmer than average temperatures are expected. This zone covers the southwest and parts of the deep south central regions. The zone of warmer temperatures hasn't changed much, if anything, since the first forecast, as La Nina tends to deliver a consistently warmer and drier pattern over this region. This next zone is where even warmer than average temperatures are expected. This zone covers the southwest region. Again, this region remains basically unchanged, as La Nina essentially locks in this forecast. Moving on from the warmth, this zone is where slightly colder than average conditions are expected. This zone is large and covers the entire country except for the west coast and deep south central regions. Unlike a typical La Nina season, the polar vortex will result in widespread cold across the eastern half of the country, even in southern areas which are typically warmer and drier. This next zone is where even colder than average temperatures are expected. This zone covers the northwest, north central, Ohio Valley, and northeast regions. The Arctic air outbreaks resulting from the polar vortex will be more impactful in these areas, mainly because they are further north. Lastly, this zone is where the coldest below average temperatures are expected. This zone. This zone covers the north central and northern plains regions. The Arctic air outbreaks will be most frequent and most intense here, with potentially dangerous cold possible multiple times during the season. This area should prepare for potentially dangerous cold temperatures at times. Moving on to the precipitation forecast, this zone is where slightly drier than average conditions are expected. This zone covers much of the West Coast, Deep South Central, and Deep South regions. La Nina is once again the result of this forecast, and like the temperature outlook, is of high confidence because of the consistency over the years. This next zone is where even drier than average conditions are expected. This zone covers the Southwest region. It directly overlaps with where the warmest temperatures are expected as well. This will likely result in enhanced drought conditions which has been an issue in recent years during La Nina winters. 
Moving on from the below average precipitation, this zone is where slightly wetter than average conditions are expected. This zone covers the Northwest, North Central, Great Plains, Ohio Valley, and Northeast regions. Though this is typical during La Nina winters, it is a little more expansive than what is normally expected, so expect a more active season to come. This next zone is where the wettest conditions are expected. This zone covers the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes regions. There will be a very active storm track across this region, and when coupled with the Arctic air outbreaks, will likely result in a very snowy winter with some quite large snowstorms and potentially even blizzards. We will dive more into that in a moment. Now we will move on to the overall forecast map. Starting with the gray section, this is where mountain snow is expected. Above average precipitation will result in increased mountain snow, which will greatly benefit ski resorts. It is also likely that snow reaches the lower elevations a few times when the Arctic air outbreaks overlap with incoming storm systems. The orange section is where warmer and drier conditions are expected. As mentioned before, this is the usual during a La Nina season, and severe drought will likely be an issue once again. Ski resorts might have some trouble getting the fresh powder this year. The yellow section is where mild conditions are expected. It will be slightly drier and slightly warmer without much fluctuation in weather throughout the season. These areas are too far south to be noticeably affected by any Arctic air outbreaks, so the weather will likely be consistent and calm. The light purple section is where occasional cold is expected. This area is very similar to the previous one, but has more room for fluctuation in temperature as the Arctic air outbreaks can reach and affect these areas. Many of you may not believe in forecasts after last year's historic snow event, but I will confidently say that that will not be happening again this year. In the black section, average conditions are expected. This area is in the spot between the divides where things will be just around what you would typically expect. However, this does not mean that you won't be exposed to fluctuations in temperature and storm minus, as there will likely be a few times where you will be exposed to significant changes. In the pink section, a battle zone is expected. This is where storm systems will overlap with cold air, but not always cold enough for all snow. All precipitation hazards, that being rain, snow, freezing rain, and sleet, should be expected here. The unpredictability and uncertainty of what each different storm system will bring will result in often dangerous and disruptive conditions at times. In the light blue section, cold and snowy conditions are expected. The combination of cold air and an active storm track will result in increased snow and mostly all snow for the majority of the winter season. Lower elevations, however, are more likely to see more rain or mixed events, but they are also still likely to end up with above average snowfall. In the blue section, snowstorms are expected. This area will still see rain and mixed events as well, but the active storm track and cold outbreaks will lead to a heightened chance of snowstorms and above average snowfall. The chances are much better than in recent La Nina seasons. In the dark blue section, nor'easters are expected. The Arctic air outbreaks will allow for some storm systems to form far south, allowing them to pull up the east coast. This will result in potentially large storms and the chances for major snowstorms along the northeast. This year could bring an end to the snowfall drought, which some northeast cities haven't been able to break in years. Lastly, in the red section, the worst of winter is expected. This is where a very active storm track, along with significant Arctic air outbreaks, will result in frequent heavy snows. Large snowstorms should be expected, and the chances of blizzards here are the highest among any other place in the country. Additionally, strong winds are likely with the large systems, creating potentially dangerous wind chills. Lake effect snow will also be very active and highly disruptive, with another one of the top active lake effect years expected. It has already been an issue this year, and it will continue to be an issue, especially through mid January before the lakes begin to freeze over. Thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and found this useful. I will try to create more content throughout the winter season, but I won't make any promises. It's going to be quite the active winter season. So get ready for winter and stay safe.